They're not doing so that. So two things. One is in response to your first question. Look, right, it's anecdotal evidence. It's, it's a sense of feeling. But it's also we've got the governor and the top elected official in the state of Ohio, who is supposed to be you know compiling data. His office is supposed to be compiling data. Has now said publicly that he's got evidence, uh, and they're gathering evidence that the oil and gas industry is not a higher higher on the high one. So I mean, I think one of the things that we're doing is reacting to that statement and pushing him and pushing the oil and gas industry. Second is they are supposed to be, uh, the Department of Jobs and Family Services is supposed to be compiling the report. So they're supposed to be doing actual investigation into who's being hired. I'm assuming he's basing his comments off the uh, initial data that's coming into Jobs and Family Services. One of the things I would ask is that that report be published as soon as possible. Um, that the governor get out the data so that we've got hard numbers uh, that you can re you react to, that we can react to. Uh, but it, but I you know I, I think that when you've got the top elected official in the state of Ohio who pushed really hard to get this industry into the state of Ohio, who's now complaining that Ohio ones aren't being uh, hired, I think that's a pretty solid indication that uh, you know Ohio ones aren't being hired. Yeah, well, don't forget our cynicism, similar to yours right now, is the mm -hmm. fact that we're not we, we were told that this would be two hundred thousand jobs for the state of Ohio. And then the study came out of Ohio State that said that they left a few zeros off and it would only be 20,000 jobs. The industry came back and said we meant 60,000 jobs. So, you know, we're, we're cynically and, uh, and very mistrustful of the industry and, and now the administration. So just tell us what the numbers are so we can say to our constituents, here's what's happening, here's what we're offering, here's how we're going to participate uh, in, 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 uh, in what's happening in the gas and oil industry. We're okay. You know, I mean, look, we've done everything we could, those of us that are here, uh, to make sure that it was safe. Is it safe? You know, that's, that's still subject to uh, discussion. Uh, but the fact is that we want the jobs. And the jobs are there. We want to make sure that, that the jobs and family services do, in fact, post those numbers so that we can say to our constituents, we are hiring Ohioans. We want to hire Ohioans, and we're not at this point. What's the magic about 60%? Why, why that number? Uh, well, uh, this mat, well, I'd, I'd love to have 100%, but well, I think right. being reasonable, we do have to train some people, and I think that that's uh, the important element there. You can't, uh, you can't just uh, drill a hole in, uh, in Mother Earth and expect that you, you know how to do it. There's some, there's some uh, training. Well, so, what in the oil and gas industry, you're going to say, well, Ohioans aren't trained to do this. We have the workers who are trained. Now let's bring them in you know, do the job. We don't have time to uh, set up a program at Star Stage in Youngstown or wherever to, to train these folks. And so, you know, we really can't meet that. So I've been traveling the state with the Manufacturing Task Force, and it's not as if folks didn't know this was coming. Uh, we all knew this was coming. And so there are community colleges and universities who have been training people to do these jobs. Uh, and some of the you know, folks that are already in the field are training people to do these jobs. So it's not as if this is all of a sudden today a new concept and we need to train people for jobs tomorrow. That is simply not what is happening. Uh, we've known about this. The, uh, we've been to community colleges who have been training people. Uh, they're partnering with the universities in the areas that are drilling. And so, as Representative Hagan said, it's not a tomorrow problem. It, this is going to be going on for a while. This kind of legislation guarantees that when those workers are trained, and remember these are people that have been working in Ohio in different industries perhaps, and are being retooled, retrained. This is what we're asking people to do through workforce development. We're asking universities, community colleges, and individuals to do this, to retrain themselves, to participate in the economy, and then we don't hire them? I mean, it's nonsensical. And so what we're saying is, as we retrain people, and we are, and we have been, those folks should get top priority. Those are the folks that should get these jobs, as opposed to folks that are coming in from out of state. And if it takes you know, a month, if it takes a drill or two, okay. But as soon as they're ready to go, and I would report that some of them are ready to go, they should be hired. Because they're doing everything we've asked them to do uh, to, to retool themselves to participate. Does, does your uh, legislation uh, assess any kind of penalty on the industry or industries uh, if they don't meet the 60%? I mean, what's the incentive for them to meet that criteria? Well, the, the incentive, of course, is to uh, join with, with the governor uh, and reminding them that they have an obligation. Uh, look, we're minority members of the legislature, and there's only 
so much we can do. Mike and I wanted to introduce the 7% uh, severance tax. The severance tax. And it was based on, of all places, Texas. Uh, and the governor came up with 1.5% severance tax. Uh, and guess what? That's not enough to take care of what's going to be happening in our area, in, in the Youngstown area particularly, because you're going to have uh, um, trucks that are coming with, uh, with uh, toxic chemicals coming across our ways and our roads and bridges. And there's going to be damage. Uh, what they do is their responsibility right now. Uh, and quite frankly, in 315, uh, we, we tossed it off to the local governments to make those negotiations. So, you know, the, the penalties are that hopefully we'll be able to get them to do the right thing from our perspective. If we were, if we were in fact, uh, in the majority, I think uh, those of us that are here would certainly support at least, uh, uh, you know, up to 7% uh, uh, tax so that we make sure that they do the right things, that we have people watching what they're doing, and what we certainly would strengthen jobs and family services to make sure that they are reporting. The reports are just not coming in. Well, with all due respect, that doesn't answer my question. So, I mean, you're talking about the severance tax. I'm talking about your 60% and your, your assessment. What's, what's the so teeth of, of enforcing the 60%? I mean, what's the fine? If I don't hire 60%, Oh, sorry, I broke the law. No consequence. What's my incentive to, to follow the law? Uh, well, if I had my brothers, I certainly would find them. Uh, but we're actually realizing our minority status and doing everything we can to make sure that that they do the right thing, and hopefully they will. But you know, I, I but you're cynical, Bob. But you're cynical about you don't trust them, and yet you're trusting them to. No, to I'm not call point. I'm not trusting them at all. Well, I know, but you're, I'm not you're trusting, trusting them to do the right thing. No, I'm, I'm not, not trusting them at all. But, uh, okay, so uh, if I had legislation instead of just the amendment, the legislation would have fined them severely. But my amendment was basically to try to get them uh, to do it, to do the right thing. That's what my amendment was. My legislation, if I would introduce the legislation, would fine them severely. Would, in fact, uh, do everything they could, to, uh, do everything I could to make sure that they don't operate in the state of Ohio if they're not hiring people in the state of Ohio. That's what I would do. Uh, now, if I was the governor, that's what he should offer. Now, since you brought up the tax thing, um, we know you don't think the Kasich tax hike on drillers is big enough. We know you're not hot on the idea of using the money that would be raised from any severance tax hike for an income tax cut. But for the second time in a half in a half year, Quinnipiac University of Independent Polster has found by two to one margin, Ohioans continue to support that tax shift plan, the governor's tax shift plan, higher, slight, somewhat higher taxes on the drillers, lower tax on the income tax. So my question to you is, why why won't the Democrats support what Ohioans apparently are telling the pollsters they support? Because Ohioans also support uh, basic public services. They support strong schools. They support um, universities that uh, don't have to pay $40,000 a year to send their kids to. Uh, they, they support having uh, police and fire uh, uh, officers come to their uh, homes when there's a problem. Um, and so you're right. When, when people get uh, uh, asked a kind of a basic question, um, you know, would you be willing to agree to uh, you know trading off the severance tax versus income tax? I don't know that people think about it. You know, in terms of the, the totality of issues that, that face Ohioans and, and face their pocketbooks or face their, their future existence as, as Ohioans in the state of Ohio. Um, you know, our our, look, our position is, is that we've cut the hell out of services in the state of Ohio. Cut the hell out of uh, budgets for schools. And that um, under the Republicans and under the, under the Casey administration, services have been really, really, really harmed uh, for Ohioans in the state of Ohio. I think it's absolutely irresponsible, absolutely irresponsible for us to take uh, an increase in the severance tax and parlay it into an income tax cut. And we're gonna, I'm going to fight uh, as hard as possible to make sure that if we have the severance tax, that, that it's high enough uh, to cover both the, the, the administration and what we need to do in terms of making sure that. Um, the oil and gas industry is safe in Ohio, but also that it goes into uh, uh, restoring some of the cuts that have taken place in terms of school funding, uh, you know, local government services, and other things that we need as services for the state of Ohio. And I'm going to make that argument as loud as possible, and I'm hoping that people respond to that. 
Well, I think it's, it's as Representative Foley said, we have obligations that we have to pay. We, we have to pay these things. We have obligations. And he, he gave you a list of important services such as schools and police and fire. I know that some of my communities have been pretty hard hit by the cuts to local government funds and the elimination of the estate tax. One of my townships uh, has a, a fire department that's 80% uh, smaller than it was a year ago because of the elimination of these fundings, these funds. So we have obligations to pay, but the other, the other part of this is um, we don't know how reliable a severance tax is going to be. So any legislation that's going to transfer the obligation to pay for these important services to the severance tax needs to also say that if the severance tax isn't producing enough income, then how do we continue to pay for these important state services? So I think it's, it's very easy to ask a basic question. Sure, would you like a tax reduction? Of course we would. But we have obligations to pay. We have services that we want to have, that we're proud to have in Ohio. Good schools, affordable uh, secondary education, post-secondary education, police and fire, those things. But so we need to, whatever it gets drafted, needs to make sure that that revenue source, wherever it comes from, doesn't cause reduction in services. I think that's really important. Can I just once again offer a business perspective? Um, so we had a meeting last night, our last meeting of the task force last night, the manufacturing task force, and we heard from folks that are creating jobs in Ohio that they're counting on the state to partner with them and invest in infrastructure and education. These are two of their top priorities. And so as policymakers, as legislators, I think we need to understand our obligation as partners to the folks that create jobs and provide, because you always hear about this instability issue with business owners. Uh, they don't want to invest in an unstable climate. And so they, if they know that we are responsible partners in this and we understand where the investments should go and we're willing to make those commitments, then I think we see them behave differently and create jobs. And we are seeing it. And, and, and they say it over and over again at these meetings. And so, you know, when you, when you talk to individuals, uh, I think if they were to understand uh, what, what creates jobs, what makes communities whole after the roads have been torn apart by the trucks that are moving in and out, I think that becomes a very different question if you ask it that way. 